Hold on, hold on, wait. Hey, 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 hold up. Mei Mei is Loki a freak. Why is her mouth open like that? And why are her eyes rolling back? Nah, I know she enjoyed that. Alright, we finally get to see Mei Mei boxing, and the curse spirit she fighting got literal hacks. Anytime Mei Mei gets close, he puts her back in a box like he's Nezuko or something. This curse's domain expansion has three main steps. Step one box him up. Step 2, bury them on the ground. And step 3, start counting to 3 like an angry black mum. And if you don't escape within that time period, it's over. Mei Mei asks Wee Wee for a favour. And here they go again with their sweet home Alabama tomfoolery. Mei Mei tells Wee Wee to die for her. And this guy starts smiling like he just found out that all his classes were cancelled for the day. And he tells her that he'll happily die for her. Wee Wee might be top 5 biggest glazers in anime right now. Right up there with Bartolomeo, Deku and Genos. Wee Wee gets the curse's attention, allowing Mei Mei to slice his hand off but right as it tries to land the counter he gets quick scope for 200 damage to the dome by one of her crows me personally i'm never going out to just a singular crow that's just me though we skip over to the goat nanami baby girl maki and the old man that reminds me of bang from one punch man that's where they run into squidward's cousin but before we can even fathom what happened this man naobito uses his flash step and lands an overhand right ikago from hunter hunter recovers and picks up like 500 human skeletons this is really looking like the place where erwin was taking his IG flicks. Dagon is now reminded of Hanami and bro decided to evolve right there and then like he's a Pokemon. Now he's standing in the sky with a water bomb and he really thinks he's Eskino lifting his finger in the air like that. <laughs> bro, <laughs> I know bro just finished watching 7 Deadly Sins posing like that man. Bro's posing like he's about to take a flick for the ground. He releases his water jutsu and the old man begins yapping about frames and animation. I keep forgetting that in Jujutsu Kaisen you get a literal Zenkai boost by explaining your curse technique. So every time someone is having a whole yapping session, their curse technique become stronger do you know what the optimal resolution is to watch big booty latinas throwing it back bro you're like 56 these young bucks like watching it in 60 fps 4k resolution but not me i be watching it bounce and jiggle in 24 frames per second nigga you is nasty as hell bro nanami sneaks up behind and manages to land a blow on him and maki tries to get in on the action but just gets blocked i'm not gonna sit here and lie other than mei mei jujutsu kaisen is really not letting the female characters shine after they realize that dagon has taken absolutely zero damage up until now they all came to a mutual agreement that it's time to jump bro and you know what they say if it's not broke don't fix it dagon puts his guard up like prime mike tyson ready to defend himself but he ends up getting hit with a generational combo. Now Beto is carrying the team right now, I'm not gonna lie. He teleports behind him and continues to give this man straight work, eventually standing over him and delivering what I thought was gonna be the final blow. But Dagon ends up using his domain expansion. Turns out this is where the Jujutsu Kaisen villains have been chilling this entire time. Now that Dagon summoned them to cheap cheap beach from Mario Kart, he's basically guaranteed one because he has a guaranteed hit on them as long as they are inside of his domain. Now Beto continues putting up Hall of Fame numbers and summons a simple domain that allows him to negate the guaranteed hit feature of a domain expansion. Nanami is getting pieced up but as Naobito is focusing on not getting hit, Dagon comes in and hits him with the Francis Ngannou Superman punch, sending him flying, and then returns the favor by teleporting behind him and dealing him a lethal blow. Marky tries to help but just ends up getting kicked away. Marky pulls back up after realizing she's part of the main cast, and the goat Megami spawns in out of nowhere to give Marky the assist of the century. Now that Marky got her main weapon back, she finally putting in some work and hits Dagon into the water. Dagon realized that Megami is negating the guaranteed hit effect of his domain by summoning his own domain but as he's about to finish off Megami, Nanami comes through and saves him. Nanami is such a W man, he always looking out for someone else. Nabito pulls up and, and damn, <laughs> like <laughs> they gave bro the shanks deluxe. No one is safe in Jutsu Kaisen bro, they just introduced him and they already got him on his last legs in the same episode, that's crazy. After they all come to the general conclusion that the jumping has failed, they decide to run away as Megami tries to make an opening in the domain. But as they try to get out, they would all bear witness to the bare flesh of the one who's free, to the one who's left it all behind in its overwhelming intensity.